Hi guys, it's the 42nd episode of Prompt Squad. I feel like I should maybe make some kind of Hitchhiker's Guide reference right now, but I'm not clever enough to think of that right now. So I'm just going to get into this month's prompt, which was False Idols, suggested by Zoe. I was really excited to get started on this prompt, mainly because I feel like this is one of those, you know, you can't just start straight away. You've kind of got to mull it over a bit, you've got to do a bit of research. And you know, I'm a big nerd, so that was like, oh, I'm so excited. So yeah, I did do something a bit different for this prompt. It was kind of a, of a kismet moment because I found this cheap like DIY clock kit when I was in Hobbycraft the other weekend. And I decided, oh, I'll pick it up and we'll just see if I get an idea for it in the future. And then when I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, okay, I've got an idea for a circular design. Let's put it on the clock. So yeah, I was quite glad that I didn't just forget about it in cupboard for, you know, six months like I usually do. But yeah, when I was researching false idols, I was looking a lot more at kind of natural, maybe like the druids kind of theme designs. Because I do love looking at druids and like, you know, ancient culture, especially around the UK. Probably because I lived down in the southwest of Wales for so long, you know, you've got all those castles, you've got the Euphorian legends too, and then characters like the Green Man. You just see them a lot around, you know, there's a very like, you know, clear visual dictionary around there. And I really love reading about them and, and traditional, like, natural based religions and spiritual processes just in general. I think they're really interesting. So yeah, I've probably mentioned it before. But there's like a thing called the tree calendar in the UK and it tells you like how each of the trees grow and like what type of month that they work and then they've all been correlated through the year and like that information was used to guide people on like what you thought of somebody's behaviour or yeah it's just, it's just very interesting to see how people thought at that time. It's kind of like fortunes, I guess, but I don't know. I just think there's something very interesting in thinking about how people deciphered the world around them in the past, especially when you would have lived, say, like in the UK. You've got all these giant forests all around you. You're just surrounded by all these animals that don't really exist or aren't really around anymore. It's just interesting to think about someone being in the same place that you are, but thinking so differently, I guess. Well, I could just keep talking, but the important point that I'm trying to make with all of this, like, garbage is that I saw this symbol of these three rabbits kind of arranged in a circular design where the ears are connecting in a way that makes this kind of central triangle, but also kind of, like, interconnects each of the hairs together. And I thought it was just really interesting, so I decided to do some research on it, and I found out that the earliest representations of this image on record seem to be cathedrals. I mean, there's a really well-preserved one in Germany, which is called uh, Dreihassenfenster. Basically, it just means a window of free hairs. But you can also see it in East Asia, it exists in the Middle East, and even places like Devon, you know? <laughs> They're called the Tinner's Rabbits there. They're a little bit of everywhere. And I think anything like this with rotational symmetry in it often seems to appear again and again. It doesn't really matter where you are in the world, but especially with links to religion, I think that symmetrical art always seems to go hand in hand. Because of that, the symbol's meaning is pretty broad because of how many places it's appeared, depending on the perspective that you have or you're looking at it from. I know with Christianity, you know, the faith in general loves the idea of freeze, you know, the father, the son and the spirit. So it has been linked to that as an image. It's also kind of linked to like balance and something being equally proportional. It's a very natural image. The hare isn't a hunter creature, so it can be linked to peace and safety from evil. 
I mean, like I say, it's a broad symbol. Not to mention just how anyone is going to interpret it. Even without this information or a backdrop of history, you can have your own idea of what this symbol means to you. As you can probably tell, I was really inspired when I started seeing it, and I really wanted to create my own version of the symbol. So I did some rough drafts on Procreate, you know, before I transferred it as a pencil sketch onto this wood, and then worked it up using gouache. I've been trying to learn how to use this new IKEA lamp that I picked up. It has this phone attachment on it, but you know, I just wanted it so it would give me more options when I'm filming, but there's a lot of user error as you can see in this video. I'm hopefully going to get better with it soon. I do like the quality of the image in comparison to my DSLR. The trouble is, my DSLR camera is like, it's nearly 15 years old at this point and yeah, it's, it's working fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is made more for still images than filming. So I think moving to the phone would be a lot easier in the long term. Anyway, I painted the base tones using the Arteza gouache set that I got a while back. And then I used these Posca pens to add the smaller, sharper details over the top, kind of like the stars and the moons. Because the white Posca pen that I was using has been sitting still in my thing for so long because I don't ever draw anymore. <laughs> but no, it, it is becoming a little bit opaque basically, so even after a good shake it was still a bit opaque. But in the end I kind of like the effect that it did, it gave the moons a bit of shading and a bit of texture, so it was a happy little accident, I was quite happy with how it turned out. The mechanism was pretty simple to put together. I don't know why I keep punishing myself by trying to gild objects, but I did try it again. These clock hands, I mean, as you can see, massive roaring success in that. Oh, I just, this stuff is the bane of my existence. I, I love the appearance of it. I love it when other artists do it, but I cannot get my head around how to make it look good in my own art. I mean, I know practice makes perfect in that, but in the end with this one, I just ended up adding another thin layer of glue over the top. And just putting this darker tone glitter that I had in the cupboard just to hide how awful it looked. <laughs> and yeah, once it was all dry, I just clicked it all together, got it going with a single battery, and I'd say, you know, for four quid when I picked it up, it's a nice little kit. Uh, definitely worth picking up if you do see it in Hobbycraft yourself. It's a decent piece of wood, it's quite thin, but it didn't warp at all with the paint. It held the paint well, the colours looked decent in person, and the mechanism's pretty good as well. I mean, it's a bit loud, I guess, if I had to make a complaint, I guess, but I mean, it's four pound. You know, measure your expectations, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, I really like how the design worked, and I'm glad I played with the colours and moved to this, like, primary colour palette rather than a mix of greens and golds that I had initially sketched up in Procreate. Like anything, I can see things that I probably would change if I was to redo this project. I probably would darken the edges and create more of a gradient to the centre. I think darker edges as well would have made the stars pop a bit more. You know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. How is it, eh? I'm going to take a quick break here with music just to let you see a bit more of the process before coming back with some final thoughts and the rest of the Prom Squad's art.
and here it is all finished now let's get on to the rest of the prompt squads art though this month and see how they approached this prompt of false idols em i'm pretty sure sent this like mid days after we announced the prompt she was writing on it this month and i can see why because she created this gorgeous digital painting of oh, tim timothy chalamet chamois played chamois <laughs> i can never pronounce that word Sh chalamet that name always sounds wrong i think it's my accent anyway uh, the blending especially on the skin tones that she's done and the brushes that she's used to create the hair textures are just they're just insanely well done i absolutely love the mix of smooth and textured brush strokes that she's done they really make them stand out especially with this black and white portrait emily's realistic art always kind of gives me shivers to be honest she's got a great eye for making art that feels like photographic but also has a lot of artistic styling in it i just think it's really beautiful and precise Far Pharaohs took the prompt in a different direction, a direction I definitely didn't expect, with this coloured pencil tiki glass with a side of lemon. It's making me thirsty over here, but yeah, I think the idea of using pencils for this subject matter was a really brilliant choice because it's pulled up the texture of the paper and also in combination with her shading, she's added all this depth and life to her piece as well. I really enjoyed that she's added these textures with it being carved wood. I really like the complimentary colour palette too. We kind of went opposites of each other this month for our photos with our limited colour palettes. So yeah, I think it turned out really, really well and a really interesting take on the prompt. When I saw this piece by Zoe, I literally just was like, oh my god. <laughs> I'll be honest, it's still kind of difficult to get proper words out about it. I think everyone who's seen Zoe's art in general always appreciates how clean and stunning her paint pen work is. But this pop art style that she's done of a like, portrait of Zac Efron is mind blowing. It's just such a fantastic interpretation. I think my favourite aspect is the colours, you know, imagine that, I like the colours. But yeah, the pop of blue in his eyes, how it matches the background too, it just, it gives him a lot of life in that art. And I think the use of pink and purple as these kind of complementary like colours either side, it's just got a really nice way of matching and creating this really lovely colour scheme. But also, you get all these different levels to it, get a lot of definition without having to add lots of unnecessary information that would have made it a little bit too like realistic. I think it's nice that it's very stylized. Carmel also followed this train of thought of false idols being like a, a version of celebrities. And also, I think she played a lot with the idea of serial killers a bit too, because I think creating this portrait of Evan Peters, who's in that new uh, Dharma series, it's just a fun twist on the theme. I love the way that she's used this mix of charcoal softness against the stronger lines, and then rubbing them, and then gathering up some paper texture on the clothing. Like, there's just a really nice mix of line art and then smooth blended sections. It all just comes together really well and to make this like it's a mixture of realistic portrait but then you've got all these stylistic influences in there that really lifts him out from the paper oh maybe that's just me his eyes are pretty intense i think he looks a little bit too alive this one troy makes this horror and comic book style with the prompt to create this stunning like egyptian god themed illustration I love that, that, especially like Zoe, Troy has used the colours of the background to add a bit of extra light and intensity to the subject's eyes, and then he's paired it, in his case, against a strong black and white line art piece. It's terrifying, <laughs> but I really love it. I think one of my favourite aspects is probably the negative space of the pyramid being in this foreground position, and how he's used that to create this multiple triangle composition. It's all framed very beautifully, it's a really nice composition <laughs> overall. I think it's just a really lovely bit of design and it really helps to make the art feel very powerful and a strong image overall. It feels kind of graphical. <sighs> Andy's face this month is too clever. I don't think I'm going to be able to say enough to truly, you know, give it justice, but I'm going to give it a go. The way that she's used the charcoal and the design in general is just wonderfully spooky. Perfect time of year for it. Her concept was around social media as a false idol and creating this edifice of logos, kind of like a giant cathedral that's being worshipped. In even more deliciously, you know, she posted it on Instagram just for the sheer irony of it, which I doubt, you know, I was the only person who enjoyed that one. I thought that was a very clever little idea. The atmosphere in the illustration is intense. She's really captured a kind of futile and fearful feeling behind all of it as well. It does make me feel disconcerted looking at it, which, you know, it's pretty impressive, but I'm gonna move on because of that. <laughs> it's a great job, Annie. 
I know Nadia wasn't as sure with this one, but I'm really glad that she gave it a go because I think it's really wonderfully expressive drawing. I do love whenever Nadia does brush pen work, to be honest. She draws with a lot of movement and life, and she's very confident to just kind of place a line and strike it. It's just fantastic. I think a lot of people, when they draw, they like to repeat lines over and over. But I really appreciate when someone's, you know, got enough definition in themselves to be like, no, this is what I want to do. And yeah, I think it's probably one of my favourite parts of Nadia's work. I like how abstract this piece is as well. I feel like we've kind of had a similar thought pattern amongst animals and nature within false idols. So maybe it's that, or maybe she's looking more at this kind of multiple headed creature, like a multiple gods, multiple faces. I don't know. I love when art kind of leaves it to the viewer to interpret what's going on. And I think Nadia's piece here is just very inspiring and challenges you to think. And I think we all need that more, don't we? Twyrob also looked into the female celebrities as false idols, but she took it into her medium of embroidery and really brought a lot of different aspects to it. I love that she's created this piece that at times looks like one continuous line of thread. I love the mix of line weights too created by the different stitches. I think it makes the image a lot easier to read, but it also gives each element a moment to shine. Like that thin line of the cable of the microphone, it's looping around the silhouette and it doesn't take from it. But then I think it's also thick enough to express the infamous, you know, thank you very much, like line work and typography underneath too. I mean, I'm going to be a broken record as well because I do love the colour palette that she's done. This aqua and grey meets red and brown. I think having two cold and two warm colours really works well together, and I just, I just love how they're interacting. I think it works really well. Finally, Kelly took the idea of false idols in a similar direction to Annie as well and explored it in the form of technology in general. And I'm just like blown away by this painting. I, I'm struggling again, like it's, it's been a very powerful month this month. Creating this piece of art digitally is such a lovely idea and detail and just the image overall is so intense. I absolutely adore it. The open hands outside of her face feels like it's a framing technique, but it's also quite intense. The expression on her face, the graphical lines on the skin, I just, I think it's intense and insane and I just love it, Kelly. I'm struggling to express myself. It's very well done. Composition, colours, idea of using neons, I think that's great. The electricity and how it has all this like luminescence to it and it connects everything, all the different elements. Yeah, Kelly, you've blown me away. I've got, I've got nothing to say. I just think it's really well done. And on that note, that's everyone's art from the Prompt Squad this month. Everyone went hard this month. It was like <laughs> really hard to like calm down a bit reading this and, and talking about it. I just think, wow, <laughs> it's very, very good work. I think the ideas and concepts, the range of mediums everyone did. I just think there's something very cool about seeing all of you explore creating an intense image in very different ways. I think it's very inspiring and I hope that, you know, if you took part or also if you're just watching, it's inspired you too because, yeah, it, I love the variety that we had this month. And with that, let's get on to the next month's prompt. Now, I know I'm late, but we're keeping up with the old tradition in Prompt Squad. When it comes to October, the prompt is the best of Inktober. So I've said it before, but the Prompt Squad ultimately is just about having fun. With this being the big month of art for the vast majority of artists who post on social media, I think adding an extra piece of work onto the pile isn't the best idea. So when you finish this month's Inktober, try and pick your favourite piece from the entirety of the month, tag it with Prompt Squad or send me a message or an email, whichever you prefer or is easiest for you, and I'll make sure to add it to next month's video. Obviously, if you're like me this year and you've dodged Inktober because you couldn't bear with another month of inking this time around, you can do something similar to what I'm planning on doing, which is creating a single piece of art using ink for Inktober and then use that for the Prompt Squad as well. Prompt Squads are always pretty chill with the rules, so don't worry about what your idea is or what you've, where you've done Inktober this year. It's all just about having fun. So in the end, if you want to add it to Prompt Squad, Get it on there so that all these different artists can follow you and see what you're doing and, you know, offer all that support that they're really good at doing. Then, you know, just make sure to submit it with Prompt Squad on it. I'll get it found and I'll put it in the video. The deadline is the 1st of November and at that time I'm going to announce the next month's prompt too. I hope you all enjoy the start of spooky season and aren't feeling too overwhelmed by Inktober if you're taking part. Good luck guys and thank you so much for taking part again and for watching the Prompt Squad this month. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you again soon. Bye!